was the falling of the Holy Spirit upon the Christian church. Pentecost was known as and is known as the birth of the Christian church. Amen. So while we are not a denominational specific church, we do honor the fact that Pentecost is a day that is to be celebrated because this was the day in which the Holy Spirit was given to the body of Christ. We did a little teaching on the Wednesday night, so I'm not going to do a lot of teaching on Pentecost today, but I am going to do some preaching relative to what Pentecost brought about in our lives. So if you have your Bibles today, um, we're going to look at, just, just to honor uh, the day, we're going to look at Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, and then I'm going to read John chapter 14, verse number 26. And do those, and uh, we're going to do a little preaching. I'm going to pray we'll do a little preaching, and uh, we're going to go home. Amen. Uh, Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, then St. John chapter 14, verse number 26. The word of the Lord in Acts chapter 2 says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them clothing tongues like as of fire, and it set upon each of them. Verse 4 says, And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now St. John chapter 14, verse Number 26, St. John 14, verse 26 says this, But when the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. I'll do my best this afternoon, this morning, to preach a message simply entitled, I've Got Some Help. I've got some help. Uh, this, this needs to be a little interactive. Look, look at your neighbor and uh, tell your neighbor. Say, neighbor. Neighbor. I've got some help. I've got some help. Uh, that sounded okay. I need a little more help than that. Uh, look at somebody else. It don't have to be a neighbor this time. If, if you got to, you can look at me. Uh, but I need you to look at somebody that's really going to get what you're saying and somebody that really believes what you're saying. Uh, say, neighbor. Neighbor. Uh, you're yeah, talking to your neighbor. Talking to you, neighbor. I've got some help. I've got some help. Amen. Put your hands together. That's good. Let's pray. And then I'm going to get into the text. God, we thank you now uh, because we know that you're real. We thank you for your word, which is true and is pure. The word of the Lord declares that it is the entrance of your word that gives us a little bit of life. You give understanding even unto the simple. And so we thank you that you're bringing about understanding to our lives today out of your word. We pull on the Holy Spirit now, the one that is our help. We pull on you now, God, to bring back to our mind all things whatsoever Jesus has said. We pray for supernatural recall of your word, every illustration, every example, God, that is necessary to bring about this point today. I pray you release it back into my spirit that your people's lives will be changed for the better and even for the best. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. When we identify uh, in the place where I'm really taking my text is John chapter 14. When we begin to look at this particular verse of scripture, uh, we understand that Jesus at this time is approaching Brother Jared. He's approaching the season where he knows he's getting ready to die. Uh, he understands that his time on earth is drawing nigh. And because his time on earth uh, is drawing nigh, Sister Aria, we identify that he's trying to prepare his disciples for what life is going to look like when he's gone. He understands that his disciples have grown somewhat comfortable, Brother Foster, with the fact that Jesus was always there. Uh -huh. uh, they had grown somewhat accustomed to the fact that when times got tight since the ball night, they didn't have to do any work because Jesus was already there. Wow. Uh, they had already grown and vanished ground to a place where they had seen storms arise in their lives. And instead of them having to pray, Jesus was always right there. Mm. So because he knew that the elements of the Akasha of him no longer being there was coming to their lives, he had to take time to, to prepare them for what was life was going to look like when he was no longer around. 
Uh, has anybody ever been coddled? Oh God, maybe I shouldn't ask that. But has anybody ever been really spoiled in their lives to the point that where they really didn't have to ask for stuff, it just like stuff already automatically appeared. Okay, maybe nobody's been there. Uh, uh, but 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 if we if we can knock out the, the cobwebs in our memory and go back to your childhood, I know that's I know that's some work for a lot of us. I know, but, but, but but if we can just dust off the cobweb and remember when you were about eight or nine years old. And the only thing you would do is you would go to the table and somehow food would appear. Wow. Ah, help me today. Wow. Wow. Uh, you, you, you would go to the bathroom and every time you went there, somehow soap was already there. Uh, you would go to the bathroom as a child and every time a uh, toilet paper was, was always there. Uh, but Sister Buck, like there came a point in your life where one day you went to your own bathroom. Uh oh. <laughs> and where it was that magically toilet paper just used to appear. Oh. You now have to be the one to get it so it can appear. Mm -hmm. but, but, but if I've never prepared Evangelist Graham for the shift that's going to take place in my life, I'll begin to think that maybe something's wrong with me. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I grew up just and things were just there. And if I'm never trained or taught about how things got there, when I get to a place that I got to be the one to do it, I won't know what to do. Right. Oh, about that. I can remember going to college, and I, you know, my mom, she, she did a, a great job, specifically, uh, probably by the time I turned into about 14, uh, and, I, and this, isn't, this isn't even a lie, this is really the gospel truth, and I, I want her to look at this on YouTube, and I uh, need her to rebut me, but the, the reality is, I can really count on one hand, all right, uh, the number of meals my mom cooked from the time I was 14 until I left. One hand, I ain't, I ain't joking, I ain't trying to be funny at all. It sounds comical, but it's true. Y'all said, well, you pass, she made bricks, she did, she would make bricks. You know, that, that was a morning thing. I'm talking about sitting down to the dinner table. Um, so Wendy's was my homegirl. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and Mosberg, uh chicken spot and pork, was my homeboy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because Sister Aria, uh, the meals just weren't happening. Uh, just, they just weren't there. They just weren't happening. And, and so I realized that, wait a minute. Um, I'm going to have to do something if, if, if I want to eat. Um, because when I was four, and you know, I didn't probably know what Wendy's was. Uh, but, but, but she helped me in her own way, uh, whether it was intentional or not. She helped me to identify that I've got to be able to make something happen when things aren't happening for me. Wow. Okay. All right. so, so, so Jesus. Jesus is talking to his disciples and he says, you know, uh, you, you've experienced me, you've been with me, uh, every time something's come up, I've automatically kicked in for you. But I need you to understand that a time is coming in your life where you're not going to be able to look to your left and physically see me anymore. You're not going to be able to look, you know, out on the sea and just see you walking anymore. So I got to prepare you for what it is that you're getting ready to face. Uh, Sister Lipscomb, I got really excited when you began to pray and you began to talk about how, in fact, I need to manage grand her agitation today. We get to talk about how in fact that uh, you know this is the time for us to come and to put something on reserve. Evangelist Graham said, uh, because we, we don't know what the week holds for us. Wow. And uh, that, that's so true uh, that, that we got to understand that when his presence is here, we've got to take advantage of his presence being here. Because even though we can create, as I told you on Wednesday, we can create a space for his presence, uh, we don't always have the opportunity to corporately create the space. So when the corporate creation of the space appears, Sunday morning worship, we got to take advantage of the opportunity not just to get our praise on now, but to even have a remnant of that praise on Thursday. So that whenever it is that I need to feel the corporate presence of God, I can pull back on what I got from Sunday. But if I sleep during praise and worship, uh, if, if, if I clean my fingernails during praise and worship, uh, if, if, if I wonder what cooking for dinner for praise and worship, I'm missing the opportunity to store up something when Jesus isn't there. Right, right, mm -hmm. right. That's it. So, 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 so Jesus is, is preparing disciples, Mr. Black, and, and he says to them this. He says, uh, but the comfort. He says, you know, I, I'm, I, I've been with you for a while, uh, but, but I'm leaving. But, but there's a comforter that's coming. This comforter is the Holy Ghost. Uh, whom the Father will send in my name. Jesus says he's going to teach you all things and he's going to bring all things to your remembrance. 
If I told it to you, it's coming back. So today, what, what I want to do when, when I'm talking about we got or I've got help, I, I want to take an introspective look at the Holy Ghost. And uh, I want us just from this one particular verse, I, I'm, I'm going to do my best Baptist preacher impersonation and, and give you Mr. Jacobs three points, and uh, maybe a little hoop, and then I'm out. Okay, uh, so uh, when you identify, he says that the Comforter is the Holy Ghost, uh, and the Holy Ghost is the one whom the Father will send. All right, when we take a look at the Holy Ghost, the word, the name Holy Ghost as it relates to the text, it gives us a Greek word, it's just the aria, known as the paraclete. Okay, the paraclete, P-A-R-A-C-L-A-T-E, the paraclete, uh, I mean, C-L-E-T-E, I spell it again, P-A-R-A-C-L-E-T-E, P-A-R-A-C-L-E-T-E, -E. the paraclete, he is the one that in fact serves as our advocate, he is the one that serves as our go-between and our mediator. Uh, as an advocate, we talked about this, uh, we talked about intercession in Bible study one night. The advocate's job is to go on the behalf of a party and to be a defense on that party's behalf. Uh, but, but Mr. Jenkins, I have the ability, and I taught this in Bible study, I have the ability to go to God on your behalf. But the advocate has the ability to go to God in your behalf. Uh, that means uh, I can only go to God and say, God, I'm standing for my brother, Minister Jenkins, today. Uh, and I want you to do this, and I want you to do that. He needs you to do this. But the Holy Ghost says, uh, God, I'm coming you to, to you today as Minister Tony Jenkins. Wow. Uh, I'm coming to you as Sister Cheryl Balkan. And, and uh, the reason I'm coming to you is because I need you to do this for me. Uh, and, and, and even though, God, you're doing it for, for, for them, you're really doing it because I'm asking you as them. So, so, so the Holy Spirit has the ability to go to God and to take your place. Oh, okay, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good around my corner already. He, he has the ability to go to God and take your place. Uh, that, that means when he shows up in the presence of God, so, uh, the, uh, he goes to God and he says, God, check, check, check this out. Um, I, I'm coming to you now. Uh, looking like D, but sounding like you. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm coming to you now, uh, looking like this 16-year-old uh, young lady, but uh, I'm sounding just like God. And, and when I'm coming to you, God, I, I need you to do for her uh, what she doesn't even really know you need her to do for her. I, I need you to work something out for her. She doesn't really know how to ask you this, and so since she doesn't know how to ask you, I'm asking you for her. I, I'm taking her place, and I'm advocating because I understand that she's facing some stuff stuff now that she's never faced before. Mm. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go somewhere. Even when we're in the midst of some sister Akasha and we think we understand what we're in, the reality is we don't even know the full the, the fullness of what we're really going through. Uh, we think, in fact, we're going through uh, a measure of lack because we may not see the dollars in the bank account, but the reality is it's not that I'm going through a measure of lack. It may be I'm going through a measure of misappropriation. And because my prayer has been centered around my lack, God says, I'll send the money, but if I send the money and you still misappropriate it, you're going to end up in the same spot. So why don't you take a break from praying and let the Holy Ghost do what he needs to do so you can get what you need to get so you can go where you want to go. Mm, that's good, sir. Right. Mm. So he says, I'm going to send to you a comfort. I'm going to send the paraclete to you. The paraclete, again, in the Greek, it is the word for advocate. The advocate is the word for helper. Where we identify today, uh, Minister Black, like that part in the response of reading, uh, where in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 6, it says that I may boldly say that the Lord is my helper. Yes, sir. I can come to you, I can come to God with a boldness because I've got the help of the Lord through the Holy Ghost. So Jesus said, I'm going to send the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, and uh, he's coming to you from the Father. Now, it, it was important to note that uh, in, in, in Acts chapter 2 scripture where it is that the day of Pentecost was fully come, you know, the Holy Spirit came at that time. He rested on the apostles. They were baptized and they began to speak with other tongues. But it was at that time that they received Minister Jenkins a power to live. All right. Um, many of us uh, in the New Age Church um, um, uh, many of us in the New Age Church have received the Holy Ghost um, because we got saved. 
and, and, and the Holy Ghost, he comes with salvation. You, you guide him, you guide him, you guide him. But I teach this, and I will continue to teach it because it's accurate, it's right. Uh, even though I get him, Tony Jr., at salvation, I still need to be filled with him. Even though I got him, he, he, he's in my life, he lives, he's there. He, he's there. But, but, but I need to be filled with him. And Sister Kasha, a lot of the New Age church uh, got satisfied with the fact that they just got him. Yeah. And then stop pursuing the feeling of him. Ah, mm. uh, yeah, I'm scared. I'm going to do some work now. <laughs> uh, Pastor, how, how can you say that uh, so confidently? Well, uh, the reason I can say that so confidently is because your life shows me you're not full of the Holy Ghost. Mm. Uh, oh, wow. Help me here. Yeah. Help me today, Jesus. How, ah. how can you say, well, 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 even though you can Evo shot and hit a Messiah and who tied my bow tie and who stole my Honda, you can do all those great things. Uh, even though you can say all of those words, the evidence of who stole your Honda never shows up. My mm. 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 God. Uh, because. Um, church has been so content with the fact that I'm saved and I'm going to heaven and the Holy Ghost is in me because I got that. Yeah, he's there. But the reason you're still losing so much is because you're not full of it. Mm. Wow. Because when I get full of the Holy Ghost, there is a newfound boldness that shows up in my life. Peter had enough boldness that he stood up in the face of those that at first he was hiding from. Okay, I don't have time to really teach it the way I want to. But 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 understand this: when, when Jesus died, when Jesus died, you know, he came, he showed up to the, the, the disciples, uh, Minister Jesus, he showed up to the disciples, and he says, "Listen, uh, he said, I'm gonna breathe on y'all, uh, and when I breathe on you, I want you to receive." The Holy Ghost. All right. Now, uh, so that that happened. They breathed. Jesus breathed on them. Uh, they received the Holy Ghost. But even after their salvation, their receiving of the Holy Ghost, the Scripture says that they still were behind closed doors because they were afraid. Mm. They were meeting in private spaces, D, because they were afraid of the people that killed Jesus would come and try to kill them. So even though they had received the presence of God, they received the Holy Ghost, they were still scared. But when the Holy Ghost came and they were filled with him, the Bible says Peter stood up in the face of those that at one time he was hiding from, and he began to preach in their face about who Jesus really was. Wow. He obtained a boldness, not because he received the Holy Ghost, it's because he was filled with the Holy Ghost. Now, the, the, the problem with the church today is many of us in here have received the Holy Ghost, but my question is, have we really been filled with the Holy Ghost? Because if I've been filled with the Holy Ghost, the way I act would change. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the way I talk would change. What, what does that mean, Pastor? I wouldn't be walking around talking about my defeat all the time if I was filled with the one that is my help. Yes, yes, I wouldn't be in here walking around on eggshells in my house because I'm afraid to say this and that. Because the Holy Ghost, who is my helper, works my mouth. Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. But, but because I'm content with just filling them on Sunday, uh, I haven't really pursued the feeling of him that I can feel just as good on, on Friday that I felt on Sunday. Yeah. Mm, that's good. So, so I'm, I'm trying to stir our minds today, Jaron, to get us to understand that, that even where we are right now, uh, uh, in prayer for that you got him, that he's working and he's full. But even where you are right now, I'm trying to alert your attention to know that you still got some help. Yeah. It's good. Okay. What, what Pastor Heidi said. First, first thing I see is this. Jesus says, uh, uh, the, the Holy Ghost is going to come from my Father. Uh, so first point I want you to write is uh, the help you got has to first appear. Got to show up first. Got to show up first. I, I was I was listening yesterday. The man of God that preached yesterday. Uh, you know, I'm 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 striving to become a student of the Bible. I'm I'm striving to 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 work on retention and quote scripture. I, I strive for that, brother Bartman. Uh, but the man that preached yesterday is the man that called me to start striving mm. for it. Uh, so so when, when he preached yesterday, Bishop Roger Mitchell, I uh, literally a Bible. I ain't even call him a walking Bible. He's just a Bible. You poke him, the scripture come out. Uh, but. Uh, the man was saying yesterday, and it's so powerful, Mr. Jenkins, he says, he says this, he says, uh, when, when Jesus was anointed of God into ministry, uh, the first thing the Holy Spirit did was the Holy Spirit told Jesus, come with me and let's go find the devil. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Okay. Uh, but when Jesus and, and, and Matthew, I don't know how time. But Matthew 3.17, the Bible says that, that God, a voice from heaven appeared and said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. So God gave command in, in Matthew 3.17. Jesus was the beloved son of God. The very next verse, Matthew chapter 4, verse 1, the Bible says, and the Spirit of the Lord led Jesus to the temple and to the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. So, so after he was anointed, after it was that he was approved, the first thing the Holy Ghost did was took him to find the devil. Yeah. All right. So, 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 so I, I ain't gonna preach that because that was his sermon. But uh, the, the, the point I'm making is this: the Holy Ghost has to show up, Pastor. What are you saying? He only shows up to take you into temptation. Mm. Mm. Help me, help me today, Jesus, mm. to, to preach this thing and, and get out the way. Uh, when he shows up, he only shows up because the temptation was there for him not to be there. Mm. Wow. <sighs> All right. Uh, so he said, Black, when the comforter comes, he's only going to come when I sin. Mm -hmm. It's not, okay, right now, when, when you're in your seat, do you have on a seatbelt? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, because you don't need one, right? But, but when you get in the car and, and you, you get ready to move, you need your seatbelt, right. right? So the seatbelt appears when you need it. That's right. Okay, so, 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 so if I don't need it, it doesn't have to appear. So, Pastor, what are you saying? The way you're going to see the operation of the Holy Ghost in your life is when you need him. That's right. Is anybody here? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, when, when, when you're right here, right now, and you're feeling good, and you're resting, and you're, you're ready to tap dance and do all kind of funny stuff, he's just saying, well, I don't necessarily need, you know, right now, God, because I'm okay. But, but there's a trial coming your way. Yeah. And, and, and because you're going to need him in that trial, he says, I want you to know that even when the trial shows up, I'm still right there with you because that's the time that I appear. Yeah. So, so whenever it is that I'm going through something, Thing. He'll never give me the ability, Minister Jenkins, to say he's not with me. Because he said that's the time I'm definitely going to appear is when you need me. Right. But the difficulty is if my mind is too jacked up, if my mind is too cluttered, I can't even see what's really there to help me. Okay. Uh, the word, the word, the word, the word, the word help. The word help in, in the Greek is, is a word, uh, uh, boethia. Boethia. Uh, B-O-E-T-H-E-I-A. Boethia. B-O-E-T-H-E-I-A. Boethia in the Greek uh, means is, uh, is where a rope or a chain uh, that's used to frap a vessel. Yeah, frap, Mr. Black. R A, I mean F R A P. Frap, frap, frap. Okay, uh, this is uh, how something helps it. It's this help, Boethia. It helps by a rope or chain used to frap a vessel. It's used to frap a vessel. Now, the word frap uh, means to bind or to wrap something together tightly. Uh, to be wrapped together tightly. Uh, I, I don't know if, if my if my uh, young Coalition will know this or not, but uh, we'll keep out of mind. Okay, um, there, there is a uh, there's a term uh, that they, they use, uh, Urban Dictionary. Be very careful if you ever look anything up in there. You never know what you see when you look up Urban Dictionary, so just be very careful. Just know Pastor's not endorsing it. Just know if you, you go there, just prepare yourself for whatever you might see on Urban Dictionary. But, but Urban Dictionary describes or defines the word frap, Mr. Black, uh, as something being left open or unused that can be damaged in a comical way. Let me give you an example they use. Um, if people leave their phone down, okay? Uh, TJ probably does stuff like this. Uh, he, won't, he won't admit it, but I, I see it in the spirit. Uh, somebody leave their phone down. One of his boys at school leave their phone down. And then, you know, because the phone is down and unlocked, you can go and operate the person's phone as if you're that person. So they can take your phone and they go on Facebook and they'll put some crazy status up there like, uh, uh, I got 18 legs and my breath smells bad. Uh, yeah. That person no. had just been frapped. Yeah. Mm. Right. That's, that's the urban definition of the word frap. I left something open mm -hmm. for somebody to do something comical or damaging to me. All right? So frapping. Uh, it, 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 when somebody, it has, something has been left open for something damaging uh, or even comical to be done against you. Now, if, if frapping in the world uh, is designed to be left open for somebody to do something damaging, 
God says, even the definition he gave to, to Mr. Webster, who gave us this, he says that the same or the opposite of what it is that the world views as frapping, God said, I take that and I've shifted it, that it now means the thing that binds you together. So, 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 so the Lord allows, God allows for the Holy Spirit to come into my life to be the aid in my life that binds things together that were one time loose. All right. So, so if there is a relationship in my life that is uh, just all over, the, all over the place, all over the charts, it's everywhere. This relationship is just messed up. God says, if that relationship is intended for you to be in, the Holy Ghost's job is to come and to bind together the loose parts. Mm. His job is to come and to be the aid and the helper even that you need. So he said, I, I got the sentence. So the first thing he did, he said, the Holy Spirit has to appear. The word says this in 1 John. I got the word. 1 John chapter 3, uh, verse number 1. He says, but, but beloved, uh, now are we, the, but behold, what manner of love the Father have shown towards us and that we should become, we should be called the children of God. He says, beloved, now are we the sons of God and doth not yet appear, but we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. So, Mr. Black, the Holy Spirit comes into my life to give me a reflection as to how I'm supposed to look. He comes into my situation to change it so that it can look like God looks. But the only way the situation can look like God is if we allow the Holy Spirit to appear on our behalf. Okay, uh, when, when a helper comes, the helper comes to give assistance or support to a thing. He comes to make something become pleasant or bearable. Pastor, what are you saying? If the Holy Ghost is coming into your life, is appearing in your life or situation, he's coming not just to show up, but he's coming to make that situation now more bearable and pleasant. I'll say it again. Uh, he comes into my life to make the situation more bearable and pleasant. That means, bro, bro, that when I'm going through something, that literally I want to pull what's left of my hair out. I want to pull what's left of my, my teeth out because this situation has just taken me to this crazy end. God said, I'm sending the Holy Ghost now to come to your side and make this situation become more bearable. So even when I talk about it Wednesday, even when my boss is working my nerve, when my spouse is working my nerve, when the kids are working my nerve, the Holy Ghost says, I'm here to make what was unbearable now become bearable. This is the reality. The Holy Ghost never comes to the ball night to change the situation. He comes to change you. So the helper comes, Minister Jenkins, not to fire my co-worker. The helper comes not to kill my enemy. The helper comes to change me. Because when he changes me, my outlook on the situation also changes. Yeah. When he changes me, even though the person is still the same, they're still the same hater, spewing the same hate, saying the same thing, but because the Holy Ghost showed up on my behalf, I now look at them through different eyes. The Holy Ghost has to appear. The second thing that has to happen, I got to move. Y'all, thank you for bearing with me. The second thing is, the Holy Spirit comes up according to the scripture. He comes up to teach us. So he, get, he comes first to appear. He has to show up because we need him. The next thing he does, the help does, is the help teaches us. The Bible shows us in Luke chapter 12. It's a story where it is that Jesus, again, is parallel in his death. Jesus says in Luke 12 and 12, he says, but the Holy Ghost will teach you what it is that you ought to say in the very same hour. So whenever it is that the Holy Spirit is working in my life since the lips of I'm never lost for words. When the Holy Spirit is working in my life, I'm never lost for words. Because it's his job that in the situation where I need him, he's already appeared, now he's going to talk for me. When the Holy Spirit talks for me, uh, that means the things that come out of my mouth got to be pure. Mm. Help me today, Pastor. How do you know the Holy Ghost ain't talking for me? Well, he can't be talking for you if you're still cussing. Mm. Right. Uh, he, he can't be talking for you if you still got slipsies that come out every now and then. Uh, and, and, and if the attitude isn't right, well, maybe the Holy Spirit just isn't talking. And that's the thing that bothers me about the modern church. We think we're so spiritual. We be hearing from God all the time. Thus saith the Lord all the time. But how can thus saith the Lord if your attitude ain't right when you're saying it? Oh, right. You might well just start saying, thus saith me. Uh, God help me. All right. Because when